Welcome to Student Ministry That Matters. I'm Ben Trueblood. Today, I want to give you a framework that'll help you more effectively connect with people in your ministry. All right, you're a student pastor. There's a lot of people that you lead when we think about students, parents, volunteer leaders, staff, everybody. There's a lot of people to connect with. And you need to connect, at least in part, to all of them. How do you do it? Well, today, I want to give you a framework that I think is simple and easy to use that you can scale up to your needs at your specific context and be able to connect with more people more effectively. We know that connection and relationships are the engine of ministry. And so this is really, really important. So I want to begin with the scriptural case. And you're going to see the passages pop up here. As we go through them, I want to give you the scriptural case for why you need to spend a lot of time connecting with people. The first passage is Ephesians 4.12. And we are to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. The next passage is Romans 12, 4 through 6. You can read it here, look it up later on your own. But we are to help people discover their gifts and discover who they are in Christ so that they can function as a part of the body of Christ. And then finally, Matthew 28, 19 and 20, the Great Commission passage. We are to engage in the Great Commission to reach and teach others. So all of those things go together to build the scriptural case for why you need to spend a lot of time connecting with people, strategizing and building a framework around how to do that will help you do it more effectively. So here we are to the framework. I want to break it up in three categories and I want to give those to you representing three different groups of people. And I want to start with the leaders that serve with you in student ministry. These are people that you need to connect with once a month outside of the church. Now, I say outside of the church. That can be phone call. That can be meeting uh, a couple of your leaders for coffee. I always like to do these in smaller groups, especially if there is a gender situation where as a male youth pastor, there's a, a female leader or vice versa, whatever the case may be. So I always want to do that in smaller groups, maybe two or three, but you need to find a way to connect with all of your leaders at least once a month outside of the church. Again, that can be phone call or otherwise. So if we back up one, one step, that means you're gonna have to have a list of your leaders. And for all of these categories, I wanna encourage you to have a list handy so that as you work through this framework, you can, you can go through and cross off people that you're connecting with and making sure that you're hitting everyone. So the very first part of the framework is your leaders and seeking to connect with them once a month outside of the church. The next category is the teenagers in your ministry. And you're going to find that this matches up with our video on how to spend your time with students, leaders, and parents. So I want to stop right here and make that perfectly clear. If you haven't watched that video, it goes along with this one. It'll help you so much to have both of those in your mind as we talk about this. So the students part of this, if they miss two weeks in a row, connect with them. All right. Now, uh, we know that the average person attends church about 50% of the time. So one week, I'm not super concerned about unless you know there is a situation there, then follow up. And that comes with relational depth. But if they miss two weeks in a row, they need to be connected with. Now that can be from you, or it can be one from one of the amazing leaders that you connect with that leads their small group. But I wouldn't go longer than two weeks if they miss coming to church without connecting with that person. Now, from your list, the ones that you regularly see, the ones that you connect with most often, don't worry about them you are going to find ways to connect with them. The ones that you naturally gravitate towards uh, on a Wednesday night or whenever your worship service is, the ones who naturally come up to you and find you, those are the ones that don't need extra connection. What you're looking for here are the students that you rarely connect with. And divide those students up so that you are seeking to connect with them once a month. Now, this can get really daunting if you have a large ministry which further emphasis, emphasizes the need for you to multiply yourself, other leaders to come alongside you and catch the vision of this. So again, any student that misses at least twice in a row needs to be connected with outside of the church. And then take that list of students that you have, mark off the ones that you naturally gravitate towards or that naturally gravitate towards you and seek to connect with the others, which will probably be about 80% of the students 
seek to connect with that 80% outside. Now, the last part is parents. Again, take the list, work the list, and seek to connect with them at least once per semester in a personal conversation. Now, for both of these last two, this is where I find that extracurricular activities, sporting events that students are involved in, band concerts, musical theater, whatever the case may be for you and your context, this is where I find those events to be particularly helpful because you can make it a point to walk across the bleachers, wherever it is, to connect personally and have a conversation with that parent or even students that are in the stands. So remember, it's not always just a phone call or coffee. There are places and things that are built into the natural rhythm of students' lives and parents' lives that you can capitalize on to make sure that you're connecting with them. So again, just to recap, leaders every month, students after they've missed for two weeks, and the 80% that you don't naturally gravitate towards every month. And then parents as the last third of this kind of triad framework is to make sure that you're connecting with parents in a personal conversation at least at once a semester. All right. Now, again, multiply your leadership, bring people along with you. But I want to say this as we close, your voice and your connection as the student pastor matters. Yes, you are bringing and you are wise to bring leaders along with you. Because Ephesians chapter four tells us we need to train the saints for the work of the ministry. But your voice as a student pastor matters deeply in the minds of parents and in the minds of teenagers. So while we can multiply ourselves to make sure more connection is happening, your specific connection matters deeply to having people engaged in your student ministers in your student ministry. So don't abdicate that entirely. Still make sure that you're seeking to connect on your own. Hit like and subscribe. I'd love to hear how you connect with people in your ministry in the comments down below. Let all of us learn from you in the student ministry that matters community. We'll see you next time.